lot of people in the city of Toronto are struggling with substance use, poverty, and homelessness. On top of the grueling lifestyle of addiction, drug users on the margins of society face intense stigma. From our own perspective, harm reduction is the answer. Hi, I'm Quitra, and I've been using for over nine years. Hi, I'm Electra, and I've been using drugs for seven years. Hello, my name is Polo, and I've been using for over 20 years. My name is Jane, and I've been using drugs for over six or seven years now. My name is Shannon. I self-medicated for 12 years. Hi, my name is uh, Kim Prince, and I've been using for 27 years. Um, my name is Sky Blue. I've been an addict now for about, I would say, six or seven years. Many addicts wake up each day with no intention to use, but the Jones kicks in. They end up doing things that they don't want to do to get money for drugs. Twenty. What? Twenty. Okay, let me see some paper, Doc. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. that's what I'm talking about. Big yeah, up yeah. for me? Yeah, yeah. Right, thanks. You know it. Once they have the drugs in their hand, it doesn't matter about stigma or anything else. Because in the end, it all comes down to this. I don't get it. What is stigma? That people always think of like, you know, that you're some dirty, uneducated, you know, bum or whatever. I, I, I just can't, I can't stand these kind of words. The stigma against drug users affects me by not enabling me housing options. It's affected how uh, people treat me. They assume that I'm uneducated. They, they assume that I have a, you know, a long criminal record. Just basically that, that I'm a bad person. Everybody looks at me and says I'm in the wheelchair because I did drugs. It's impacted me in the way like how I get like treated by people. Like if like I ended up going to the hospital or something, it's like I had trouble breathing or something. I noticed that I became low priority because, you know, I was known as, it's in my file that I'm a drug, drug addict, right? So I get treated differently and I don't like that, you know what I mean? that I have to wait a lot longer to get medical services because of my drug use. Yeah, it has impacted me. Yeah, I'm just getting over pneumonia right now. The other day, the ambulance came and um, I had my uh, crack pipe in my hand and uh, instead of being about my breathing, the ambulance attendant just automatically, you know, zoomed in on the fact that, you know, you're smoking crack. She wasn't as like, you know, ready to help me because I had the crack pipe in my hand. It makes me feel like I don't fit in. I'm transsexual. I go through a lot of hatred, a lot of negativeness, and it makes me a very poor person. I don't eat, I suffer, I'm a street walker, I'm just me, and I deal with it every day. The stigma with drugs has affected me to the point where it's, people, people look at me different. They, they see me as um, untrustworthy and less of a human being. Like we're living on poverty, and a lot of people are going out and doing crimes. Hey Jane, what do you got today? I got a good deal, it's a beautiful porcelain mug. Okay. Gotta be worth something. Worth something? A mug? Seriously? Come on, you know better. Fill this up with some money and we'll talk, alright? Okay. I mean, I, Jane, just. Jane. I'm bye going. bye. Okay. Yo, what's poppin', yeah, dog? What's... Yo, I'm really hurt. Oh, no, what's this? Give me something, something small. Yeah, I hear you, dog. Something small. What's this something? Seriously? You bring me. Ooh, you you got bite marks in here, like dog drool too. Seriously, <laughs> what do you take? Oh, <laughs> Get rid of this shit, man. Okay. That, that's twice now. Yeah. I, I, I got Jane coming to me with yeah. some stupid ass mug she drank out of, or, or whoever. And you know what? She's 
Okay. I got you. I got. I, I, I got you. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't see nobody right now. People, a lot, a lot of users, uh, they, they're broke. Poverty, down to the bottom. So sometimes, including me myself, you know what I mean? The addiction just runs me that I have to go and do some crime to fix my addiction at that moment. I don't like doing crimes, but my addiction rules. When my addiction rules, I gotta go with my addiction. It's a bad thing, commit, committing crime. I'm not sitting there saying, do crime or do whatever. There's other ways to handle my situation. Mm -hmm. But however, sometimes my head is not all together. Hell and on. I can do shit that I would be sorry, I would regret. I got something that you like. I know you like it. Yeah? Yeah, I know you like it. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Yeah, I told you like it. And that's what I'm talking oh, yeah. about. So you got my thing? Yeah. I gotta go. Yeah, yeah. I'll be needing it for Yeah, 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 yeah. Check this out. Yeah. Yes. Say it again. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Lying and, and stealing, uh, that that didn't really sit well with me. It, it it made me it made me just more creative, more skillful, more more you know challenged my life a bit, you know. And until it got, the double life got exhausting and, you know, I just had to choose. And I did. But we all have had lives before, we were doing okay. It's, you get caught up in addiction, addiction messes up. But overall, we're good people and we did add lives before, 95 jobs and kids and wives and the rest of it that goes with a regular 95 job guy. Before I started using drugs, I was very, I was really athletic. I had a lot of goals that I wanted to pursue in life. Um, I was actually going to school and I was working. Well, I was doing, I was involved in more activities. I was more into sports. I used to play football. I was like, I enjoyed like being more physical. Well, psychotropic medication as prescribed to me disabled me and made me sedated in a schizophrenic trance-like state. I needed energy drinks and coffee. I needed stimulants. I needed something to keep me awake and alert, make my mind conducive for thinking and enable me functionality. I tried any opportunity that I came across to do that for me. I've always been an outgoing person, going around, doing all kinds of things. And I was more active and I've always been very likable. I did college. I did my Saskatoon Business College, my corporate computer training. So yeah, I guess you can say I was another brick in the wall. At one time, um, I was I was married. I was a housewife. I had to raise children. So um, I lived a double life. I had a secret life that I lived for years. And that's a lot of fucking work. And, it's cr and you have to be so creative. Like there's so much reason why people use. I use because of my emotional thing. I mean, I don't know about no one else, but for me, Polo, that's what got me out. I started using drugs just out of curiosity, to tell you the truth. Um, I started I started with marijuana. It escalated to drugs and cocaine and other drugs of that sort. So um, it was just pretty much out of curiosity and a little bit of peer pressure as well. I started to use drugs to forget about my problems because I was abused when I was younger. I was forced into this kind of life. So basically what I'm saying is I didn't have that chance to be a child. The reason I started using drugs, I was in an accident and then due to like uh, the pain that my physical pain in my body, like I started off with like prescription medication is like um, gone into like hillbilly heroin and stuff like that is because of my pain. I guess you could say it's like a way to manage my pain. Pharmaceutical medication and other types of natural street drugs came across me later on in life, but it was the opportunity of trying something else that might make me have a feeling 
that made me feel better, that made me feel functional, that enabled me strength. Oh, my family was a little uh, strict, conservative, my mom and stuff like that. And uh, it was just like, you know, a release for me, just like to not have to be proper and not have to be like, you know, so like, uh, you know, straight and narrow and all that. Because I felt like, you know, my mom just was all so um, bitter and angry all the time and, and unhappy. You know, I, I just wanted to be happy. You know, I just wanted to be happy. I just wanted to go out, have fun with my friends and be happy. I started using drugs because um, some of the emotional feelings that I get, I couldn't handle it. The best way I knew to handle it or to numb it was by using drugs. And it worked. And it still works. People would probably think, well, the reason why would somebody want to become an addict? It's not that you want to become an addict. You live a pretty normal nine to five kind of life, you know what I mean? You have things, you have cars, you have homes. You know, you take care of your children, like you, you know, you're responsible. Then all of a sudden you fall off that track and then, you know, you never think it happened to you, but it can happen to anybody. Just one thing just went into another and just totally spiraled into a whole new lifestyle for me. And that's addiction for me. I used to think it could never happen to me because I was too strong of a person. I would just like to get this message out that it could happen to anybody. After that, everything went downhill as... I started getting into drugs and started using and getting into prostitution and drinking and smoking and all of that stupidness. And I found myself more like depressed and I already have psychological problems, like psychiatric problems. And all it does is I feel that the drugs just puts me into a darker, darker space and like a hole, you know? And um, I end up using more drugs to try to like escape it, which is like, is this like if you do like, like K, like you ever get in the K hole? This is a different type of hole, but yeah, I'm in the hole, yeah. My drug use impacted me by, um, I lost most of the stuff, most of the vanity stuff I had. Um, I lost my job, I, um, I, did, I wasn't the quote unquote every, everyday dad I was supposed to be. I had to give up my self to a trustee's office and it's just horrible living like that. Somebody else running your life with your money and you know, but it's been helpful because it's keeping me off a lot of drugs and I'm afraid I could end up killing myself. Um, well ever since I started using drugs, I no longer have money for my daily necessities. Um, it has separated me from my family and friends and my close peers that I used to have in the past as well. It's just separate, created a big division in my life. It's not something that you think is just fun and games. Yeah, you have a toke here or there. And then before you know it, you get caught up into it to the point where, you know, it gets a hold of you and you just, it's not that easy to get out of it. And then you end up in places where you don't want to be, whether it's prison or other places where you just don't want to be your homelessness. I, I feel like I spent half the time trying to not do something that I like doing and battling that because of the people that loved me. I was hurting them and it was hurting me because I couldn't, couldn't do it for them. So that was, uh, that was a really big obstacle. Being lonely, being pushed away from my family, doing what I have to do to survive, basically, in a lot of horrible ways. And me being trans today in society doesn't make it any easier. Honestly, it's made my life a living fucking hell. It, with, with internalized stigma, it makes me feel, one, I'm a nobody, I'm a less, lesser than, I'm marginalized by society, I, all the bad things, like, like I'm basically, I'm, I'm no good for no one, even, even myself. That's the way it made me feel. Stigma has made me be more accountable for myself and be more defensive of myself. Stigma has changed a lot about how I think about myself because um, 
a lot of times I see myself through other people's eyes, through their own perceptions. I'm not feeling too good about myself with all this complications of using and just being able to live. It's been a very hard. From the negative, the negativity that I got, that I received from quote unquote non drug users, um, make me feel less lesser than a normal person. If there's such thing as normal. Um, it just don't sit right with me. Oh, big time. It's like, um, like my self esteem, and then I feel like more negative in like in generally in anything I do. And um, do yeah, I I think it has a lot to do with how how I think about myself. Yes. Um, sometimes, sometimes it does it does get to you because you realize that before anybody really gets to know who you are, they're just judging you. On, on the fact that you have this, uh, you know, this addiction problem. At this point in my life, I'm not. I, I don't let it stand in my way anymore because I know who I am. Without harm reduction, I would be seeing myself as wrong or bad or having ruined my life. Whereas with harm reduction, I can say it was there for me. Because it makes you feel so low, your self-esteem and all that. Now flip that out on the other side, arm reduction. Arm reduction goes such a far away. It saves my life the way I use drugs. Um, that builds back your, your, your confidence, you know what I mean? Like, okay, the Joes over there are saying bad things about you. Who but cares? These, these, I don't. Uh, but these people over here want to help you because they understand you. And that's where arm reduction comes in. Is that there's places out there within the city of Toronto for all y'all that need to like find like clean rigs and also you'll obviously get one of the attorney kit as well. You can get these at the works which is located at Victoria Street and Dundas right downtown across from uh, Dundas Square. So I hope you all like use your you know use safely and protect yourself in the in the spread of diseases of hepatitis C and HIV. Uh, you know I really I really hope you can all use safely. And I know a lot of y'all have like certain diseases like say HIV or hepatitis C. Even if you do have that, I'd still like it if you would protect yourselves and not share needles and go to a place like The Works or Queens West or wherever you can go, like, you know, there's Counterfeit, there's other uh, organizations out there that hand out these free. And you can call 211 at any time, 24-7, 365, and they're there to help you. And even if you're homeless and you just don't know where to go and there's nobody out there, you can go to any payphone and hit that 211 and they will link you to where you got to go. And 201 is free. Harm reduction has helped me a lot, actually. Um, it's helped me keep everything in moderation. It's helped me give, it's given me a clear perspective of my addiction and what steps I need to, to endure to overcome it. Yeah. Well, right now, I am taking part in this documentary and it's, it's, really, it's really helping me improve my life and giving me um, re really good insight of my addiction and it's it's actually really helped me see see every see everything clearly and help me express everything that I've kept inside for so much years and help me deal with my current problems. One thing I want to say to harm reduction, stigma, addiction, street life, we need drop in a work program, safe injection sites and legalized brothels. Well, I don't have to go and look to buy where the kits are because I wouldn't know where that is. So at least I have the stuff here where I'm living. They come to your home, so I find that's very good. I'm grateful. There are a lot of times when I'm on the streets and I'm working and I have no condoms and like street health from Sherburn Health Center will come along. They'll give me condoms, they'll give me um, brand new kits to use because I don't like to share my pipes, first of all. Especially after I give a blowjob, it just doesn't work. And when I'm hungry, I like to... I'm really thankful that they stop and give me sandwiches and gum and hand sanitizer and all that sort of thing. So yeah, I guess you can say it does help me in 
different ways, but it doesn't make my life better. It just makes me safer. Well, at least if they're doing drugs, they've got clean needles and stems to use and not scrounging around everywhere to find them. Without the harm reduction, I wouldn't have the knowledge on, on different um, addiction problem per se, uh, overdose and so forth and so on. Um, without the harm reduction, I probably wouldn't have been there talking to you. For the folks that doesn't want to stop using drugs, mm -hmm. um, harm reduction, that's the mm -hmm. bomb. Um, it saves your life. It may not, you may not see it at the moment, but every little thing, like don't share pipes, don't share, don't share nothing, everything belongs to you, don't share. Even the fact that using a tie and sharing a tie, that could be bad. Mm -hmm. So it is from an arm, arm reduction point of, view, point of view, make sure you always have everything that you need. To me, when I hear the word housing, it's like you've been housed somewhere and it's rent geared to your income. But there's something better than that, and that's supportive housing. For me, personally, I love supportive housing. And why? It's simple. Because if I didn't have supportive housing, the supports that I need daily in my life as an addict and with all my other problems that I have, psychiatric problems, emotional, whatnot, it's like, I, I, I couldn't really, that would not be the best place for me, it's just housing. I really need the supports, and the supports do help me a lot. Yeah. Harm reduction housing has helped me in maybe one or two ways. Off the streets and being able to have some foundation to figure out what I have to do to get my life straightened out. Well, um, it's, actually, it's actually been a bittersweet. It's helped me a lot. Um, I'm currently stationed in a shelter now, so that's pretty much my, um, my temporary residence at this time. And um, it's, just, it's just helped me keep my addic addiction at a moderate level for the time being. Harm reduction housing has helped me in a lot of ways due to that I'm able to be like housed when it's rather difficult for me to be housed and the supports to like other agencies, you know, that, that I need help with. Like the supports do help me with the direction of my life. It's safe in versus being on, on the street doing the same thing, which is a lot more dangerous. It reduces uh, reduce the risk of myself getting hurt or somebody else getting hurt. That's the bottom line. I feel better since I've been living in supportive housing as to when I didn't. I, I have my privacy now. Um, I feel a little bit more positive just for the fact that, you know, I got my own little place now. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, I'm good. I'm, like, I'm comfortable there. And, you know, that, that's, that's such a good feeling and I haven't felt like that. For, for quite a few years being homeless. It's all fun and games at the start when you first started. Everything seems okay. True. But it's, it cre creeps up on you, and when it creeps up on you, it reminds me of being in a tunnel. All you can see is straight down the tunnel, you can't see nothing else. And get lost in that tunnel, that's a messed up feeling. I know it because I've been there, okay? Um, for me, to get out of that tunnel, I need help from the outside. I need people good people I can go talk to, share my shit with, they give me an example of what's going on and try to work me back out of that tunnel. Or if I don't do no work, I'll be stuck in that tunnel for the rest of my life. I feel secure and protected with the services of harm reduction. I go to counseling, but it's not, not so much for drugs, but more for like my mental issues and uh, just counseling in general. And you know, I'm involved in some programs like through that. and. Um, I, I, I feel it is, honestly, I feel that it does help me. I can fix that feeling instantly by going into a blast or whatever it may be. Um, yeah, it works for a minute, but the, the, the real core of it will still be inside of you. So, um, to be more open, open-minded, open-minded to a situation, people play some things, instead of bottling it all and then explode, or don't know how to deal with it, um, shared with some shrink or somebody else. Like, I do a lot more um, communication of what's going on with, within me. And I think that by, by sharing that, I would not have um, need anything to numb it because I'm already dealing with it by sharing it. There's a good chance we, we will have a regular life, regular life again. Um, it takes a lot of work to get there, but 
there is a good chance we get there again once we do the work. For myself, I would like to get back on track. You, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. You know, it takes time, but you know what I mean. Like, if you do the work, if we, I do the work, I know eventually, slow but slowly but surely, I will get back on track. I'm in a state of recovery. Crack nurtured me over the years. It was a form of rehabilitation, but I don't need it right now. I'm in recovery. I stop thinking about myself in a certain way and uh, start looking at myself differently. I, I'm going to change my story. What I'm currently doing to improve my life is to um, uh, I look for a stable housing, number one, first and foremost, in um, Keep within, keep within um, the, the, my addiction circle because, from experience, people tells me once you're within that and you keep doing the work, um, eventually you stay clean and you have a better life. So that the future would be complete abstinence. I'm hoping that I can find myself an accessible apartment in the near future and get back into the community maybe do some volunteer work again. I am actually applying in George Brown College to finish my nursing the last two years to become a registered nurse. That is my goal. The, the key to success is just um, really connecting with your spiritual side and, and loving yourself and that's, that's, that's where true success comes from. I don't know if I'll ever actually stop using drugs but if I can then you know so be it but for the people that that are like you know struggling with the the, the the that that decision let's say uh should i stop or not that's truly up to you if you think you can do it you just keep trying it's better i look at it that you try you 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 try and fail than fail to try at all that's just the way i see yes. what you said oh yeah that's, that's that's exactly what i see at least you give it a fighting chance <laughs> So with arm reduction, it's good. I got a knowledge, so all I got to do is use it. But hopefully, in the long run, it takes me to a complete abstinence. You know, it's a start. I have no regrets. You learn from your mistakes, and that's just how people get through life. And I'd like to thank Public Health too, and um, yes. HFS, yes. you all know who you are. Yeah. And all y'all VIP staff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all did good, bam. Uh, y'all still be doing good after we gone, because that's what you do. Thank you.